Dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you so much for that very generous introduction. And I'd like to take this opportunity as well to thank the organizers, Novo Nordis, for inviting me to the beautiful city of um, Indoor. It is my very first time um, to be in, um, in Indoor, and I'm really, really excited, particularly to have the uh, Indori Poha, which I was told about this, that I must um, have it before I, I go back to Dubai. So um, I also like to thank Dr. Sunil for setting up the scene and, and making my life a lot easier and really emphasizing on the fact that weight management um, comes hand in hand with, with glycemic management. So what am I going to do is um, touch upon the legacy of um, the decade legacy of GLP-1 receptor agonists. You've already heard quite a bit um, of that from, from Dr. Sunil. I will then um, highlight the Pioneer program, which is the clinical um, development program for oral semaglutide. We're going to look at, at the quality of the weight loss um, that is generated by um, GLP-1 receptor agonists. And then we're going to, uh, I'm also going to um, emphasize on the fact that we need to have this conversation early in, in, in type 2 diabetes uh, in using uh, the GLP-1 receptor agonist. So you've already heard about the benefits, and I'm sure you see this in clinical practice um, as well. Um, they're by far, compared to probably insulin, the most effective um, A1C lowering um, therapies. You've heard about the excellent um, benefit that they have on, on weight reduction. And this you know, fortunately comes at a very low risk of hypoglycemia. We've seen that in the clinical trials, and we see that in our patients um, as well, that despite the fact that you're able to lower um, glucose and get your patients to their target uh, glycemic, ta um, uh, optimal glycemic targets, you're not uh, doing at the expense of hypoglycemia, as so happens with, um, with insulin. And then we've seen the cardiovascular benefits, um, which some of the um, agents within the GLP-1 receptor agonist class have shown us. So within clinical use, why we consider these um, very um, favorable agents, once you've got your patient on their optimal dose, you don't need to make any further adjustments when they've got a renal impairment, when they've got hepatic impairment, or whether they've got upper GI disease. It's very easy to titrate. You know, usually the dose titration is much simpler than it is for um, insulin therapy, for instance. And the side effects, which, yes, granted a gastrointestinal, are usually quite transient. And you can give your patients a few tips on how to actually minimize um, the GI side effects. So um, some of those tips is always to tell patients that they need to eat smaller, you know, boluses, smaller potions, kind of stagger their food. Um, it, it, it does minimize um, the amount of nausea that they may experience. The other thing is, of course, to try and avoid um, spicy and fatty foods. Now, I don't know how that works out in an Indian environment when everything is so spicy. <laughs> okay, so... Um, You've seen this as well. Dr. Sunil has already um, alluded to it, the ESD-ADA consensus guideline. And the thing, the most important thing that came out this year is this very strong emphasis on weight management. And so the GLP-1 receptor agonists, pointer, the GLP-1 receptor agonists really are agents that can be used on either side of the algorithm. For your patients that do have atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, irrespective of what their weight is like and what their hemoglobin A1C is. And on the other side of the algorithm where you're targeting um, glycemic control, you're still going to require to use these agents because they are um, at present the most effective agents for reduction in, um, in the weight. So ha having all that knowledge and you know having the guidelines as well, emphasizing that we do need Okay, that, that works. Um, and emphasizing that weight is such an important, um, important criteria in glycemic management, we find that if you look at the statistics, up to 60% of our patients um, with type 2 diabetes would actually 
you know, qualified to be on a GLP-1 receptor agonist, because we know that a lot of our patients with type 2 diabetes are obese. But when you look at the figures, and this is data coming out of the US, and I'm sure it might be very similar here in India, I can tell you it is very similar um, in, in the United Arab Emirates, less than 9% um, of patients are actually treated with a diabetes medication that's um, proven to reduce the weight. So there's a lot that we need um, to do. And perhaps the challenges maybe with GLP-1 receptor agonists is because, you know, there's treatment inertia. At, until, you know, recently, we had them as um, injectable therapies. And so there was always this um, clinical inertia of starting it because it's an injection. Um, and then patients don't want to um, stay on it for, for a long time. Um, I understand that uh, the injectable formulation of semaglutide was int wasn't even launched um, in India because most patients are quite averse to, um, to having injections. And therefore, um, it's really novel in the way that we've now been able to get an oral version um, of the molecule that can actually help our patients benefit from this class of medication. So... When I was graduating from medical school um, donkey years ago, it was the vial and the syringe for most patients. And you remember when you had to tell the patient to kind of, you know, take the vial and, and, and shake it off. Um, and then we've kind of evolved um, over time to once daily injections, to once weekly injections even. But I think if we ask our patients, they would actually prefer to have an oral um, medication as opposed to, to the injections. At the minute you say it's an injection, there's always that conversation takes a little, the dialogue is a little bit longer than when you offer them a tablet. But the oral administration, of course, was quite a challenge because these are peptides and um, they would be rapidly uh, digested with, uh, within the gut and that would then you know, cause limited um, permeability and therefore, um, lower the uh, oral availability. So we needed to have something that can actually help the absorption um, of these agents. And Novo Nordisk were very, um, uh, at, at, you know, at, at, at cutting edge of, of the science when they formulated semaglutide um, with um, an agent that can actually uh, protect the, the, the molecule. So semaglutide, as you all know, has got about 94% homology to human um, GLP-1. Um, it's made um, to last in the body for approximately a week. We can administer it as, as a weekly injection because of the presence of um, your spacer here, the C18 fatty diacid chain. Um, it's a more stable molecule. And then when you combine it with the snack, which is just sodium, hydrobenzosyl amino caprylate, um, the SNAC is what protects this, uh, this molecule from the enzymatic degradation, and therefore it allows the absorption from the stomach, and, and because of that, you know, you, your patient can then uh, benefit from, from the drug. Now, the only problem, of course, is with the challenge in the administration, that the patients have to take it with 120 ml of water, and um, they have to take it, of course, with, you know, uh, they need to not take any uh, food for about half an hour. And we were discussing that yesterday um, during a session in Ramadan and how challenging that must be for some patients um, during Ramadan, where you say, all right, you fasted for 12 hours, you're now going to break your fast with just water and a tablet. And then you're going to have to wait for half an hour by the time you come back, everybody's done with their meal. So, um, but you know, it's still very much doable. Let me now concentrate on the Pioneer program, which is a robust clinical program for oral semaglutide. There are about 24 clinical pharmacology trials, 10 phase 3A um, clinical trials. So we've got lots of patients, more than 9,000 subjects that are in, 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 uh, enrolled and over 5,000 of them exposed to oral semaglutide. India has been very active. Um, a, you know, contributed a lot of patients to a lot of these studies. There's a Pioneer 8 where you have um, add-on to insulin. Um, there's the um, renal um, impairment um, trial as well. And more importantly, we're waiting for the results of the soul. And I can see that 
Um, India has also participated. You've got patients in that trial as well. So what about the hemoglobin A1C and weight reduction? And Dr. Sunil has already talked about that, but um, in terms of the GLP-1 receptor agonist in general, and those were the injectable ones, what about oral um, semaglutide? Here again, this is a busy, busy slide, but I'll walk you through it. Whether you're looking at monotherapy or comparing it with the um, SGLT2 inhibitors, the DPP-4 inhibitors, and interestingly, even when you compare it with liraglutide, you're still um, able to get a, um, a further reduction in the hemoglobin A1C. And this was quite remarkable because um, I didn't think that this was quite possible, at least, you know, that this oral drug would be much stronger than liraglutide. You know, we were so used to Victozin. I had a lot of patients on Victozin when they learned about it and they said, oh, doc, I need to change and I want to be on an oral tablet. And I was a little bit um, sort of hesitant at the beginning. It's like, oh, but you're on an injectable one. When we look at the data, they can actually um, benefit um, from that as well. And I've had patients who've switched from liraglutide to oral semaglutide and have done quite well. What about the change in hemoglobin A1C um, from a baseline of about 9%? Um, so again, here in a post hoc analysis, um, patients with oral semaglutide were able to achieve that hemoglobin A1C reduction of about 2.6%. And then the important um, thing, of course, is to look at the weight. And again, um, just as we have a comparison with monotherapy um, against SGLT2 inhibitors, um, liraglutide, there is an impressive five kilogram reduction. And you might think, well, five kilograms is not a lot. I've been trying to lose three kilograms in the last two years. It is quite significant. Right, what about the quality um, of this weight loss? And Dr. Sunil already talked about that. You know, he said, it's the fat that's really important. And that's exactly what we see, that the total energy intake was significantly lower in those patients that were exposed to semaglutide um, as opposed to the ones that were on, on placebo. And so what you see is that whole body fat mass much lower in the patients that are on oral semaglutide compared to placebo. So they're actually losing fat rather than their lean um, body mass. So given that information then, that you're able to get your patients to their glycemic targets, you're able to target the weight, isn't it time that we actually start placing this agent much earlier on in the conversation um, in our patients with type 2 diabetes? So we don't need to you know, wait until they've been on three, four, five oral hypoglycemic agents before we decide that, okay, it's time for a GLP-1. Um, you can actually um, use it um, in combination with metformin. Um, you can use it as monotherapy in those patients that um, do not tolerate metformin, um, for instance. So early initiation of, of um, semaglutide, we've got evidence from the Pioneer program that does uh, result in patients uh, achieving higher um, hemoglobin A1C targets. So here you've got um, those patients that were able to get to their A1C targets of less than seven with a weight reduction of greater than 5%. But of course, you know, in, in terms of diabetes remission, you need to have um, weight loss as in the direct trial um, of greater than 15%. So early treatment initiation can actually lead to prevention of complications, as we've seen um, the legacy effect with the UK PDS. Um, so achieving that early glycemic control now is possible with, with this agent. And in the long run as well, I think if we are able to reduce these complications, we're going to be able to reduce the healthcare costs. I'm sure everywhere in the world, the diabetes um, trajectories in the northern um, uh, northern uh, part. So looking at the safety as well from the Pioneer trial, we know that you've got low risk for hypoglycemia. Most of the side effects are uh, gastrointestinal. We haven't ha had any sort of unexpected safety um, findings for oral semaglutide as of now. It's quite well tolerated, very much like the GLP, uh, the other GLP-1 receptor agonists. The only challenge, and I would say that's only a challenge for Ramadan, um, is that this drug needs to be taken, you know, 
um, in a in a in a sort of peculiar way, uh, which for some patients uh, might be a bit difficult. But again, like I said, it's quite doable. So. India is very fortunate that you already have it. You were the sixth country after the US and um, EU, Canada and Japan to have um, it marketed and available. And so I'm sure you've started to gain a lot of experience with using oral semaglutide. Um, and the other advantage is that it can also be used in our elderly patients without having to make any dose adjustments. It can be used in patients with both hepatic and renal impairment, and it can be used also in patients who've got upper GI tract disease, um, which you know that we try to avoid the GLP-1 receptor agonists in patients with um, Crohn's disease, inflammatory bowel diseases, you know, GERD sometimes because it might worsen um, the GI symptoms. So to summarize then, I think it's an exciting time to be working in, in diabetes. Um, we do have novel therapies um, that can actually make a difference in the lives of our, our patients. Um, we've seen from the Pioneer program that's an effective option for type 2 diabetes um, management with its effect on weight loss and the robust um, reduction in the hemoglobin A1C. So with that, I'd like to um, stop there. And um, thank you all for your attention, and I look forward to the panel discussion. Thank you.